the first part of today is um, I pretty much already said it because there's a lot of talented people in this group and we, we're limited by time. I'm going to task you guys to help each other out. And so I thank you very much for the offer. I'm really appreciative that you have stepped up to do that. So if anybody has questions, please arrange it amongst yourselves how you want to do it. You know yourself better than I do. So you arrange it amongst yourselves. Um, as because I'm not going to be completing each each uh, instruction or lesson, once we finish each lesson, I'm going to ask that you email it to me. Okay. So um, by the end of today, you will you will we will email. I'll tell you which files that you need to email to me. Okay. All right. So that's everybody who is here supposed to. Be. I've got my files already open. Yes, I do. Got that one ready? Not close one off. Okay. So there we are. So now I'm going to start sharing with my screen, and I'm just going to go through the foundation of uh, custom number format. And this is there is. Oh, okay. Um, the importance of custom number formatting is is especially for the field that everybody here is going into, or the area that you're going into. Quite often, you're going to be creating complex workbooks that don't exactly fit what is available to you. So it's like it's almost like not everything matches or not everything fits. Uh, so quite often you you may and there's Mazar. Uh, so quite often or quite often you may end up having to create your own custom format. So I'm going to go through that. Everything I'm talking about is going to be in the book. So I'm just going to touch on a couple of the exercises in this, and then we're going to start on. Um, so give me a minute. So I am going to be starting from page the theory of 11, 12, and 13, and the file itself. Oh, my gosh. The file, and I'm going to write this down so you have it, uh, page 13. Lesson 1, page 13, that's where the custom number format starts. I'm about to share my screen. If I don't share my screen, please, everybody, let me know. I know you will. I will turn down to window um, multiples. I'm going to go, so share. All right. So everybody should see my screen. I've actually already started some of this, or... Yeah, I already did some of this already, I think. So I'm just going to go through some parts of it and talk about the, the custom formatting in general. Um, normally, the, the, there can be up to four sections of a custom format, uh, uh, even before I get there. What is custom format? Let's, do they tell us it? Um, yeah, they talk about crucial... Um, it also, and also depending on where your your uh, files are located, back, back track there. Yesterday, I talked about location and region. Uh, today, we're actually going to go and explore that a little bit. So I am going to talk a little bit about the custom formats. Up until now, when we have done applied our formatting, we've just, let's say, I'm going to select D4. Up until now, our go-to has always been either the a uh, dialog box drop-down list or our dialog box launcher here or any one of these preset formats okay uh, most of the time you will want to spend time in the dialog box launcher okay and you have a lot of options available here you can tell I'm just going to pop down to special and custom here if your computer was set up for the US, you would see social security number and the phone number would look slightly different. Okay, so mine is set up for English Canadian, so that's why we see phone, phone number and social insurance number. What that means is the preset, when it's preset up, all you need to do is, 
is to enter in a value. So if, we, if I was to do the social insurance number, the format, uh, let's say Pinar was entering the values in there, she would just type in the numbers and the formatting would be preset for her. Um, the custom is where all the magic happens. There's a lot here. And your mileage may vary depending on how much and what you have, how, how long you've been using your Excel for. So that's where stuff is located on this computer now. I also have, shoot, I also forgot this part too. I also have a couple of other resources uh, that I've used in the past regarding uh, custom formatting. I'm now working on page 13, uh, lesson one. I've opened up destination profile. And again, I'm only touching on a little bit of each part of the lesson. You should be able to follow through with it afterwards. And if you need help from your fellow classmates or myself, please reach out to us. Okay, so I have destination profile open. Okay, better not close it. Okay. Like I said, some of it I've already done, so I'm just going to go back and go to destination profile numeric. And that's what it started. You pretty much didn't see much of anything, much in the way of changes here. Uh, most of this is pretty straightforward. So B7 to B, B7 to E8. I apologize, I keep looking over here, but that's where my compute, that's where my, my, uh, my book is. So there's a little bit of bouncing around here. And then I'm going to use one of the preset formats. All right, so it's B7 to E8. And that's just going to be our size and our population. So I have highlighted B7 to E8. And then I'm going to go into flipping the pages, what I'm going to do. This stuff is the stuff we already know. Uh, home tab, number group, number format, dialog box launcher. And you should not have to select the number tab but you might so home tab number group group number dialog box launcher so oh, i do have to select the number what they normally want us to do here is to apply the uh, separators and either increase or decrease the decimal places if i'm not mistaken it's zero decimal places and the commas get switched on admitting there okay so you can either type in the number here or you can just increase or decrease the little spinnerets. Okay. This is what we've been doing since day one. Nothing new there. So now they're going to have us step into a little bit more of doing our own custom format. And so we're going to go B15 to oh, B13 to E13. Okay, more values. The secret I have found to working with a custom format is find, find something that somebody else has already done and see if it suits your needs. So I'm always constantly looking at other resources. Um, I'm going to share some of them with you today. So I've got that done, B13 to E13, custom, fourth from the bottom. All right. Again, it's something we most likely have done before. Home tab. Number group custom. I always get special and custom mixed up. The four from the bottom, one, two, three, four. Okay, so, I've done, so we've done the preset. We've done our first custom. Okay, so now we're going to go down the rabbit hole a little bit bigger, a little bit better. We're going to create our own uh, custom with color. This is my favorite part because you can actually apply, a, and I'm doing this from memory, magenta, blue, green, not pink. <laughs> That's the only one I remember is not pink. And so I want to teach you a little I want to teach you a little trick here. Um, I don't know, can you see my entire screen? Yes. yes. Okay, good. Um, if you notice, I already have open my notepad. And the reason is Anytime I'm working with, and I'm hoping that you guys can see this okay in the notepad. If you can't, um, let me know. I'm sorry. I, I, I believe that we only can see your uh, yeah, Excel okay. work, worksheet. 
Not the you whole screen. You will be able to see it in 10, 9, 8, 5, 1. Okay. Yes. Okay. So oh. I keep my notepad open at all times so, because if I'm trying to work with the dialog box, let me get in there. I don't want to switch between yet, but what you'll always find me doing is creating the formatting that I want to use in my notepad. And then I will set it up the way I want it. And then most likely you'll see me. And again, I have to go back to the share. Go back to this is just so much fun. Okay. And then share again. So I've copied it from my notepad. So now I can go back into the number. And I make sure I do the right thing here. Custom. Okay, so the red might be here or not. I'm not sure. Seven to the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is it. And it's pretty much similar to what I did and apply. Okay. If we have a negative number, that's when we should, if I'm not mistaken, that's when we should see it again. Yep. Re the reason is because the negative, because you have the separator, the comma uh, services the separator in between each section of your custom format. If you have, if you have all four parts, that's terrific. You don't have to have all four. All right. So now they're saying create custom. And we've done the one. Okay. How about if we were to do, I'm just wondering here, minus one. Yeah. So you notice when it's a negative number, you'll see that the, the value is red or whatever color that you chose to use. Okay. And so they will take you through all these custom formats. And the secret to them is just, like I said, and, um, have your notepad open at all time. And that way you can actually type it into your notepad and then copy and paste it into your custom, the dialog box in the custom. Okay. Because again, I just want to show you, I, I personally find this space very difficult to, to work within. So that's why I like to use, that's why you'll always see me use my notepad. Okay. Oh, goody. Now we get to, so that will get you to the end of page 15. So that lesson, okay, so um, you will complete Top of page 15. This exercise is essentially just following their instructions, typing it out. There's not a lot of interactive interactivity, if you will. So that's just custom formatting in general. Now we're going to address custom count, counting format. And it can depend on where location, location, location. So we're going to create our own custom accounting format. And uh, oh, this is what I like. So I'm going to open up. Destination Profiles Accounting. I don't know if I already had it open yet or not. Also, you may not be able to see this, but hopefully you can. When you notice that I open up my files, I always go down to the file folder on my desktop or on my, my taskbar, and then you'll see me go and open it from outside of Excel. It's much quicker and easier to do it that way. So it is going to be... Destination Profiles Accounting, save it with your name. 
you may or may not be able to see that. You should be able to see me in a second, and I'm going to confirm that in one moment. There it is. Enable editing. Okay. Move the chat out of the way. Copy. You see, notice down here they've already got some of the preset formats. Okay. So this is very much the same as what we did before. Not that. So again, that starts on page. Okay. I have to give kudos to Mark and Ansuya and everybody for struggling through with the, with um, Zoom. That's quite hard. Okay. So what it's going to ask, again, same routine. It's going to ask me to, to select some cells. going to do some more applying formatting. It's pretty straightforward. This actually, this exercise is kind of fun, actually. So. I'm going to select cells B11 to E11. What is B11 to E11 bunch of numbers? Okay, we have percentages and values, which are basically the same. Then it's going to ask me to click on the select accounting, then select the symbol. Caution here, I want to make sure everybody aware, and I'm sure you are, but I want to make sure Everybody is aware that when you are applying the different currency formats, so maybe you've got the pound or whatever kind, of, you're not converting. You're just giving it a label or a different kind of label. Okay. So make sure that. So I've got it highlighted. Home tab. Number group. And accounting number format here. And I'm going to... Select, which one was it again? English, United States. Exactly the same as English, Canadian. This one you really don't see a difference. I'm going to do that to show you. So English, Canada and English, United States. The only thing I noticed when I did that was you, the, the there's a little bit more white space on the right-hand side. But other than that, they are exactly the same. You're not converting, you're not converting currency here at all. Okay, and of course it tells you about the right bracket because it's capable of reading. So then, now I'm going to select keeping B11 to E11 highlighted. I'm going to select the number format, and uh, oh, I'm going to get to do some custom stuff in here. But again, you may not be able to see. I'm going to try and make it so you can see me do this. Um, where is my notepad? Here it is. Okay. And I'm going to say here. So again, you can see my notepad, and I'm going to continue doing what I've done before. I'm going to enter exactly what I see in the book into the notepad, then I copy and paste simply for more room and space to move around. Just do not be limited with the, with the, uh, the small space. Okay. Okay. So it's comma, so dollar sign, zero comma. I'm not the fastest, fastest typist in the world. I'm warning you guys now. One, two, three. I have not object, but I find it's difficult because I'm just simply following the instructions. But once you practice it up more, it'll be fine. But right now we're just learning concepts. Semicolon again, because that's our separator, that's our delimiter or uh, separator. That says section one, section two. So the positive is section one. So we've just done that section two. You're going to have that uh, space. Or the underscore, rather, I should say. And, sorry, minus. Oh, one. Same routine. This is where I'm going to cheat a little bit. Um, and I strongly encourage this kind of cheating. It's a good way of cheating. When I say cheating, I don't mean that. 
we'll see. And rather than have you guys watch me type, which is as boring as watching paint dry. So you, in the positive, you've got the dollar sign, the zero, and then you've got the comma or the separator, and you've got the five zeros. The separator or the delimiter is the semicolon, and then the negative value is going to be everything exactly the same except the minus symbol is in front of it. Okay. Control C. Can I just again. ask a question, Debbie? Um, so this format, mm -hmm. dollar sign, zero, comma, and then five zeros, Yes. That's not the North American way, right? Is that like how it's used, the formatting used in other countries? Why? Um, it could be anywhere. It, it's universal. We are Is very shortly going to... We are Isn't very there a comma after three zeros whenever there's like a long string of yeah, every giant three numbers? Zeros, yes. Yeah. yeah, like a billion, like a billion, for example, yeah. a billion dollars. After every Let's three see. zeros, there's, mm -hmm. after every three digits, there's a there is a comma. Correct. Like so here, why is there comma. like no comma in between these five digits? Like I don't I don't know what form like in what event we would use this format. It's gonna be exact it's, instead of having the commas, well, let me let me show you. Rather than try and talk about it, let me show you. Hopefully I can explain it better. Okay. So, yeah. Um, bear with me. You're gonna see me doing a lot of jumping around. All right, destination profiles counting. And share. Okay. So this is what it looked like before. And so now I'm going to go back into home tab map number group dialog box launcher. Counting. And I'm going to go custom. So what here's another little tip. Each time you go to custom, you're going to delete whatever's in there. That's going to be your workspace. Okay. And I just I'm going to see control V. So now, in, in, to answer your question, yes, it did. But you notice the first one, you've got your separators. And then the second one looks very, very similar to one looks the same, looks the same. But well, there is one cent. The one cent is, has disappeared. No, no. Hang on. It was in a B11. Now we but Don't forget, this is what you're going to see is a zero. Point zero, even though you put that value in there, this is how it formats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, and that actually the, that was a really good question. And uh, how do I answer this? Sometimes what you think you're going to get is not exactly what you're going to get. This is why I suggested to people look at other preset formats and also take a few minutes to review all their their. Oh, where are you back here somewhere? But also to look and make sure that you uh, oh, go away people don't call me right now Florida's calling me okay um, so what they're just trying to display here it doesn't matter what number you put in here there, I've got 0 0.07 I'm typing the number 25 24 so mm -hmm. now I see. you see that Mm -hmm. It was there, but we barely, it's the, the, what they're saying is you're going to have massive numbers. And to be able to account for those numbers, right now, I've got $24 or 24 cents or something. And we see it's 0 to 4, so it actually does exactly what it's supposed to. Um, let me undo this one. Also, the, the, the good giveaway is here with the U.S. dollar. You've got the dollar one, and yet it's represented or displayed as what you see on the screen. And that's a key thing. You'll always see me look between my screen, what I see on here, and you'll constantly see me looking and clicking in my formula bar. If you see me do that, and I'm just going to click press enter key. I'm going to do the same over here with my rupee, this uh, B11. Click here. So this is what was entered in the cell, but how it's represented or displayed is different. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that. Yeah. That's. I really wanted. To, but, but that I, I understand. I understand yeah. that. Like basically, zero point zero one is mm -hmm. so tiny, 
relative so to the other numbers that it's being yep. compared to that it turns into zero 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 yep. right you don't even see it that's how small it is i understand it that is, yeah all right good it, it, this is pretty not standard stuff because it takes your mind a few minutes but it's pretty um if you practice it enough you'll feel comfortable with it okay we're going to get into my very favorite part about two minutes where we get to play around with it right now if I was to try and add the, uh, the text, well, I'm going to be careful about where I do this. Right now, I've got values in each one of these cells. It might be, you notice here you've got the value 14505 and you've got the text FT. doesn't matter what it's in here. So again, the custom formatting, you can do meters. And that's what we're going to learn how to do is to be, be able to incorporate or add text into a number format itself so basically whatever the value is we can attach or stitch onto whatever text you want to do that's where we're going right now so think okay so done that this is my favorite part this is where you get to have a bit of fun so i'm going to select b9 to e9 oh scary stuff here lots of big numbers <laughs> once i have selected b9 to e9 um, they're saying to us that what we're going to do is the, if, and if you read from step eight, right below step eight, it talks about the numbers for you. Oh, reminds me. I apologize, forgot to mention this yesterday regarding the books. When you read the instructions, um, you'll have like 0.1, 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, 0.5. Quite, Quite often you'll read a paragraph of text in between one point like for us right now it's eight and uh, between eight and nine okay so what that paragraph of text may be referring is to the point above or the point below this paragraph of text is there we go let you in um and it, it's not consistent but that's what i want to tell you is it's not consistent sometimes the paragraph will really relate to the to the value or to the instruction above Sometimes the paragraph relates or refers to the uh, bullet or the number point below it. Just be sure you read those paragraphs, but do not look at them as instructions. All right. Is everybody here? Good. Oh, yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, Debbie, so, I'm so sorry to interrupt again. Before you proceed with teaching us how to do the, you know, the, the yes. metrics yes. with the numbers, um, could you, can I ask you a favor? Could you? put in a very large number in, in like in the cell B11, hmm. um, like, 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 like 10 million, or sorry, no, I apologize, uh, uh, 10 billion, like 9 billion. Can you, I just want to see what it'll look um, like. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm just going 10 zeros. Okay, Let's 90 billion. Yes. All right. Okay, good. Okay, good. So it does put in a mm -hmm. comma after every three digits. Yes. Yes. Um, okay, I it didn't show that in the, you know you know in the chart. No. In the... no. Okay. And you yeah, and you'll see that I actually do go in and experiment and play around with them quite a bit if I don't quite understand what it is it's trying to tell me. So you'll, yeah, you'll see me do that quite often, and don't be afraid to do that too. Okay. Okay. So B nine to E nine. Okay. Speaking of big numbers. Okay. So you notice here, you, you see the symbols that when you see this, it says this number is too big to be represented in this cell. Not the same as the, the uh, pound symbols, all right? So you'll, you'll see one or the other. If you see the pound symbols, it means that the numbers in there, you just need to make your column a little bit wider. But if you see the plus E, that means that you've got a whacking great big number. Okay, so that's the difference between those two. So I'm going to select B9 to E9. B9 to E9. Speaking of whacking great big numbers. And then home tab, number group, number format, custom. And we're going to check, we're going to go in and put exactly what we see there. This part kind of freaks me out because it doesn't look the way I normally do it. So we're going to see. Okay. Number. Okay. 
go down to custom and select. I think this is, I think this is the one that's been a long time since I've done this one. So we'll see. Oh, other thing regarding these customs, once you've created them, they should stay in there and uh, you don't have to recreate them. That, that's other good thing. Okay. Can anybody tell me the difference between, when I'm typing this in, I'm going to ask you, I want to, I, I need to know the answer to this one. This is where, that, now you see why it's here, now you see why I use the I'm afraid to use the text box because it means we have to jump between it. But now you can see why I'm not a great lover of it. Pound pound zero. And one comma. And another comma. And another comma. And a space. Anytime you see quotation marks, whatever is between those two quotation marks is considered text. That is how Excel represents text as a string. If it's between the quotations, just put it in there as text. So I could put billion, I could put my name, I could put anything in there. And it would be uh, recognized as, look at that. So what is the difference? Mystery question of the day. Okay, and you can find it in this lesson, by the way, if you're looking for it, you don't have to ask me right away, but my, let me do this first. I love this part. <laughs> so it has rounded up the numbers. Funny enough, somebody mentioned billions not too long ago, and what you did was round, so it's almost, it's almost the same thing, isn't it? Um, so it entered the text in there. Let me... Then I'm going to ask you my mystery question of the day. So instead of doing that, I'm going to, go to my custom here. Okay. I'm going to put my name. I'm going to put Deborah. See if it does the same thing. Okay, it should do that. So yep, it's twenty dollars, twenty Debras. Okay, <laughs> so whatever's between those two question mark quotation marks, it'll put it there for you. All right, mystery question of the day, and I'm going to write it here, and you. Please remember, G-I-Y-F, Google is your friend, and also read the book. What the hash sim symbol mean? And how does it compare to the, does it compare to the uh, zeros? There is a slight nuance and difference you can find the answer to this in the book, or you can Google it, and you should be able to find it there. So my mystery question of the day is this. What I do with my mystery question of the day, I just throw something in here each day, and it encourages people to get stretched outside their, 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 their comfort zone. Once you find the answer, email it to me, okay? Um, so you can look at, like I say, it's in this, it's in this lesson, not module, or... Google is your friend. So when we're dealing with the custom formatting, what do what is the difference? What happens or the difference between the pound symbol and the zero symbol? There is a very slight nuance and difference. All right. So mystery question of the day. This is actually more for fun than it is. It's just to get get people's brains percolating. Okay. Um, um. I actually wanted to ask you that when you were inputting the formula, you know, the hashtag, the zero. Um, I, wa I was about to ask you that. In fact, I wish I had asked you, then I wouldn't have to go and do it as homework. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I got in here first. I will give you a tip. Which page to go look and find it? Says she already prepared for whatever we need. 12 and 13 are your golden, uh, your golden um, areas. Okay, so actually page 12, two-thirds of the way down the page, you should see the difference. When you would use one versus the other. The question I'm always asked, and I never have a really good answer to this one, is how do I know what it is I want to do? That comes with practice and time and seeing what other people do. 
Uh, that's the way I've always always been able to explain it because nobody everywhere is going to remember everything. So I, I depend a lot on, um, I go to a lot of the free webinars. I follow a lot of the really good YouTubers. I get as many free resources as I can. Um, and, but to answer the question, because I know somebody somewhere is thinking, how do I know, know when to use the pound versus the zero? I think when you know the answer to those two, what is the difference? It will help you answer that. But how do you, as a professional in your field, know when you're going to use this? Practice, time, and seeing what other people do. All right? So quite often, I, I will deconstruct some of, uh, if I get um, a, a project or something, I will deconstruct what other people have done, see how they've put it together, why have they done that? And that, that again, that keeps continuing my, my education. Page 12, two-thirds of the way down the book, on the left-hand side, it should give you the basic answer. Yes, it's in the chart. I see it now. I understand awesome. it. Um, I, I, I wanted to ask you um, the number, the dollar sign. Mm -hmm. um, it, it represents value. It means the value of when you're looking for, when you're answer, asking a question, right? Mm -hmm. Dollar store just means, sorry, dollar sign means value of or something. Well, it just means whatever the, the, the happens to be their, how they, they do their money, like we do dollar sign. Oh, it means currency. Okay. Cur okay. Currency. But I mean, it, it, yeah. Okay. Yesterday, we weren't talking about currencies. Remember, we were talking about temperatures, but we were putting in the dollar sign in the formula because it, it means we're looking for a certain value. Right, we're looking for the value gotcha. of B gotcha. yeah. nineteen within mm -hmm. a certain area. Yeah, of absolutely. Data. Now I know what you're asking. Yeah. Okay. So the difference between the dollar sign there versus the dollar sign here, uh, we used the dollar sign yesterday uh, when we were um, absolute or referring to certain cells. So I'm just going to deviate for thirty seconds here to answer that question. Um, can I do it here or not? Um, if I want to refer to one cell, I would do equals, let's say, um, E15, dollar E, dollar 15, means I do the, the break, dollar E and dollar 15. So just to remind you, when you put those dollar signs in, it's either, you're either uh, anchoring the row or the column. If you see both of them in there, you're saying that row, that column. Oh, okay. So now I see what I'm doing wrong. I see here that you have two cells highlighted. Mm -hmm. Basically, um, how did you do that? You see how your um, E15 is blue, mm -hmm. and then you also have E20. Uh, it's selected. Like, the both cells are selected. How did you do that? Okay. You're going to laugh at me for this one. I went to whatever cell that is equals symbol because it's formula went to E15. As soon as I, the first time I select a cell, you're going to see blue. All right. Oh, because you put in an equal sign there first. Yep. So okay. it, it's color coordinated. And if I was to say, and I'm just going to say plus, who knows if it's correct or not, uh, E D15. And if I do plus again, these are not real numbers, obviously, F C15. And you notice when we, each time you add a cell reference, it's blue to blue, red to red, and purple to purple. When we get into the more complex formulas and functions, this is key. It's so important to be able to observe everything you have on your screen. Okay. okay. So it's just it's just color coordination. It's one of the, the beautiful things they have made life easier for us. So if I wanted to refer only to uh, row 15, so I just put the dollar sign in front of the row. If I only want, if I only wanted to refer to the column D, I would refer to, uh, to the column D. So that's what the dollar sign means. It means that column, the entire column it. or row. Uh, it can be both, it, but it's a little bit more. Um, when you're doing the absolute and relative cell references, are you allowing them to copy up and down? Are you allowing them to copy side to side? Okay. If you always want, let's say I always want to refer to, um, no matter where I am, I want to refer to maybe this cell. doesn't matter where I am, so I do dollar, whatever's in here, 
I, if, no matter where, if I copy it down, I only want to refer to that cell. If I copy it across, I only want to refer to B15. So by putting the dollar sign in front of the B, I'm stopping it from changing no matter where I copy it. It's anchored in column B. If I okay. put the dollar sign in front of the 15, it's anchoring the row. Okay. So it says no matter where, if I copy it anywhere, let's see, let's see, can I copy it down? Normally, if we copy something down, so now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do um, equals this guy, and then I'm going to copy it down. You'll see the difference immediately. You shouldn't have done that. You just made a liar out of me. Oh, you know why. 15, 16, 17. It should not have actually done that. Uh, that's it. This is where I'm, I'm going to go. Go home now. I've just made a on myself. <laughs> it's going to happen more than once, so don't worry about it. Okay. Okay, so you see here, the first one, it worked. It was E11. If I copy it across, it becomes F11. If I copy it across again, it becomes G11. So the dollar sign anchors either the row or the column. Okay. All, All right. right. Thank you. Yeah. But, I'm so glad something didn't work for me. <laughs> Not really. And it's going to happen again, you guys. Just to let you know, I am going to make mistakes. I am not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. You're forgiven and understandable. Yeah. Darn good, but not perfect. All right. So we've done the business. And, uh, uh, yeah, if possible, uh, can you um, do again the uh, uh, line... Uh, nine for uh, Debra. Sure. I want to say, yeah, absolutely. Because it's my favorite. So, um, yeah. <laughs> number format. So, if I was when I first let me get rid of this format. Let's just go back to um, general. Okay. So this is what the value looked like when we started off. And um, so then I went to home tab, number group number dialog box launcher all the way down to custom and then i completely copied whatever was in the book i'm gonna have to flip back to one page um here's this here's the prop not the problem but here's one of the things and i'll explain why it looks like that too if you don't use this all the time you will have to go back and refer to things so um bear with me one minute dollar sign pound Comma. Zero. Oh shoot, I do every time I do that. Ah. And comma, 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 space, quotation marks, whatever's between these two quotation marks will be uh, attached or stitched onto the value itself. So it's almost like it's stuck, it's appended on the end. That's the only way you can combine text with values. This is the only way you can do it. And once you figure out the difference between the zeros and the pound symbol, this will make perfect sense to you. Okay, so I've got three commas. So where there's where there's nothing, so one, two, three commas, yeah. Normally there'll be one comma, two commas, three commas. Okay, that's normally what we would see, but it rounds itself up. And that's why you see that it basically gets rid of everything that we don't need and just attaches the text. You'll hear the expression text. You'll hear the expression, uh, oh, where's the other one? It's text. Um, labels is another way you'll hear it. Between those two quotation marks, you, whatever is there. Thank you so much. Is that good? You okay? It's not right now. Sorry, I, I missed uh, one uh, comma. It's okay, I do it all the time. <laughs> okay, so let's go. And this is why you see, oh, uh, the other trick I can show. Let me know if I'm going to insert a text box so that I don't have to go back to the notepad all the time. Um, bear with me one minute here. And I could actually write in here, do whatever it is I wanted to do, like the dollar hash, comma, 
hash hash zero one two three space it's almost like I've done this a few times now you see here because I'm not doing it in that I still have to copy and paste and I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can actually see this bit there better all right this is easier to see than trying to go into that tiny weeny little box. So, yeah, it's work right now. Thank yeah. you. So I will try and keep this open. And you guys can see the contents of this text box, yeah? Yes. yes. Perfect. That way I don't have to switch between the notepad and the, the uh, Excel. All right. So that gets us through this worksheet. <laughs> All right, Deborah, learn to speak. This exercise, save and close. I'm not going to save it just because I'm going to have to do it again somewhere along the line. Okay. Custom dates and format. Custom date and time format. All right. This is something that most people should be able to do. It's not as picky and fiddly and detail oriented as you will find the um the accounting formatting the date and time format is a million times easier well maybe not a million that's being a bit too big so again the theory starts on page 17 and the exercise part starts on page oh yes you're gonna like this one so i'm going to go you won't see me do this but i'm going to go and i'm going to go to age calculator Then I'm going to make sure that you can see me. Okay, so I'm going to go down to here. I'm going to say new share, age calculator, and share. See, so I'm getting better at this already. Nice. I'm going to enable my editing. Okay. Yesterday, I, I, I did I talk about how day, days and times are, are organized between humans and Excel, did I explain that yesterday? I think I did. Maybe it was morning class. It's crazy because sometimes I'm teaching one class in the morning and I'm teaching the same class or a similar class in the afternoon. It kind of well, gets lost. It's always good to hear something interesting again. <laughs> so if I say something you've heard me say before, please don't be offended. It's just my old age, my old lady brain. So I have some um, age calculator here let's go look and see i'm going to do before we even get into that um so you guys can see me okay what's your birthday whatever it happens to be. and so it, here's the thing notice that even though it we see it displayed as one dash jan dash 80 you can see how it's actually entered into our formula bar okay the biggest mistake people that make with dates and times is entering the values in per incorrectly I'm going to do a correct date and time enter. I'm going to do an incorrect date and time enter. So let's say, doesn't matter if it's caps or not, but July. If you notice how it stayed over here as it, Excel says, I don't know what to do with this. It looks like text. Mm -hmm. So now let me do the next one. July There's one. Dead space. That's it. You got it right there and automatically flips it back over to the right hand side and if you look at the date it, it always goes to custom freezing out there and then you go down to uh, more and so this is what it looks like each one of these initials or each, each one of these letters means something um, so we could if we wanted to attach um, the day of the week if we wanted to make a uh, the uh, the year four digits. If we want to make the entire month and not just J U L, but July or August or September, by adding or removing these letters D for day, M for month, year for year, Y Y is year year. You also have down here um, our month, and you've got choice of A M A M P M. This one is H for hour, M for month, SS for seconds, all right? Um, variations thereof. This is where it gets really freaky. But, okay, so, but that's 
the concept of how how it looks when we uh, do it ourselves. But what is important to know, and I, I, I apologize if I didn't mention it yesterday, is how does Excel look at dates? I'm gonna um, gonna highlight these two for a minute. And I'm going to remove the formatting from it so we can see. So it's going to be date and go to general. So what uh, the great, greater minds in Excel or actually machine language way back when, um, when they had to figure out how to do the coding for this, they decided on a system, and I think it's slightly different for the Mac system, but one I know very well is the, the general system. So they said, as far as machines go, or Excel goes, anything that you're doing something, something similar to this, the start of machine time, and I'm using air quotes here, is January 1st, 1900. Uh, 12 0 0 0 0 second one, right at the beginning. And I'll show you what I mean by that one. So I'm just going to put it here. So. Okay, so it so it sees that as that. So and again, if I go back and I go back to general one. So how Excel understands and works with dates and times and that is, we've got two dates here. Humans see them as as dates and times. Um, Excel being uh, app for uh, programming. It sees it as values or numbers of some kind, shape, or form. Okay, so that's what I want to make sure you guys understood. That. Um, so select these two guys. I'll go back. Okay, I couldn't remember how they did the formats in 1980 and today. There, you're probably familiar with. Um, there's two functions that everybody using Excel should know without even thinking. Um, how to be able to put a date stamp, and I'm sure you do this in SAP, you have to have a date stamp for everything you do, I would imagine, so there's some kind of coding. Um, so if I open up something tomorrow, I, I save this file, tomorrow morning I open it up, and because the function equals today has been used here, um, it means it'll show tomorrow's date. So it always reflects the present date. This function is called a volatile function. What a volatile function means, and it, it sounds use, it, it sounds unimportant, but this is really keen stuff, is you notice, and I'm going to go and put it into the text box so you can actually see here for a second, because I know that it's tiny for you. Okay, text box. And I will make it bigger so you can actually see this. And I will keep it on. So you notice you've got equals today. You've got a left bracket and a right, a right bracket. 99.9% .9 of the time we work with functions, we, we, we do the equals because it's a formula. The kind of functional formula that, or functional formula, the kind of functional formula that it is. And normally there is some kind, something between the left and the right bracket, like A1 plus B15 or uh, VLOOKUP whatever it is for that. Normally, you have something between the left and the right. I call them brackets. You can call them parentheses. OK. And um, a volatile function says, Excel, I'm going to go down to the system date. I'm going to go and see what it is. And I'm going to go grab it and put it to more two brackets. Excel will then format that as a date so you can see it. There are two functions like that you've got today, which will just represent today's time. Um, and that's not a terrible one to use. The one I want to caution people about using is not that not it's bad. Don't get me wrong there. Now. And the now means it's the date and time. The downside of using now is it's constantly going to the system. Each time I do an update on my, my, my sheet, it's going to go to the system date and time. It's going to go grab it and bring it back, and that can slow down large worksheets, large work, your your size workbooks and your size worksheets. So if you have to do something with a date, it's preferable to stay with time with today. Uh, but uh, but both of them are constantly going to go into the system time, time and date, 
and constantly grabbing whatever that is and filling in between those two brackets. That is what a volatile, a vol volatile, a volatile function is. And that's why at least be aware of what it does. That's, that's, that's the only reason is that. All right. Okay. So the date of birth is in B1. Okay. And number custom. Ah, we do get student. That stuff. I'm going to switch over here. It's a little easier for me to read like this. I might be a bit slower. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do a fake date. Um, not a comma. If I've done it right, it's switched. Okay. So what it says is between I've been so that person has is 37, 30 years old, 0 0.7, 30.7 30 years old. How did it do that? Okay. It said um, it's sort of off track, but what it did was it said equals um this guy, I always get this one wrong, minus my birth, my, the date of birth. And so then we, yeah, then you can round it up or down. Ah, you see, and I'm going to go through this. Why, so go back here, and I'm going to, why, actually no, rather than me answer it, why do you think, I'm just going to say copy here. Um, this is formula, so it's B2 minus B1, so today's date subtracting B1. To get how many years old it is, you're going to divide it by 365.25. Does anybody know why the 0.25 is there? It's because every four years we have 29 of uh, February. You're awesome. <laughs> you are awesome. Thank you very much. Beautiful. You, yes, exactly. So every leap year, so that's how they account for that. Okay, so that that's that formula. So that's what I want to do here. It take these ugly, boring, blah format, and I'm going to go and make. I'm going to make them look cool. Okay. The only caution is I get a little too clicky with this stuff, and I always want to go and do my own thing here. So go down to more. I guess I could have gone to the diet. Okay, so I'm going to go to category custom. Everything, everything leads to custom. I'm going to get rid, get rid of whatever they have here. And so you see four, four Ds, space. You could put a comma in there if you wanted to. Two Ds, dash, four Ms, dash, Y, 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 Y. Because, 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 because. All right. And I'm going to do some capitals. And some lowercase, not quite like the book, but I just want to show you the kind of fun stuff you can do with it. One, two, three, four. Space. One, two, three, four. One, not seven. Why, why? <laughs> okay. Um, why? So what are you going to look like? So you've got Thursday, 17th of May. This is a really messed up one because it, it, it's very disjointed. If I had done it, I would have done uh, day, 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 comma, space, day, day. No. Yeah. And then I would have done space, M, 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 comma, space, Y, 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 Y. So you, this is the easiest one to do. Experiment. You cannot break it. It's completely easy to mess around with you you can't ruin it at the very worst it's going to look strange or weird but it's absolutely easy for us to do and it looks pretty darn cool uh, debbie uh, sorry uh to cut you off but um can i see like the formula again how many uh d's and m's did you put in sure okay so and i can tell you even looking at it is uh i did it with uh so it's one two three four space one, two, and I think it was comma. I can't remember. Oh, the, the one, two, hyphen, one, two, three, four, hyphen, one, two, three, four. Now let me make that a little bigger for you so you can see it. Yeah. I, so I, I don't know how you came up with that. Like, you, oh. <laughs> I mean, because you, yeah. you have you have four, sorry, six Ds all together. Mm -hmm. And then I don't understand why the space... Oh, I know. Oh. You want 
Oh, because you want to, yeah, because you want to space after the Thursday. Yeah, but, but I mean, that's four. Should be. That's uh, four Ds, and then Thursday has seven digits or more. I don't know. The four, the first four Ds uh, represent the day of the week. All right. The second set of Ds are the number of the month. Then, it, depending on how many letters for the M, so if you want to have the entire month, you do M M M M. If you only want to have three letters. You'll do M M M. Okay, so that's that's just the standard rule. You have to it has to be four. You you don't do no, it doesn't, it doesn't represent four, yeah. how many letters of Thursday should appear. You can do anything you like. So oh, shoot, I hope that I actually went to the right thing here. The number. So right, if I did um, M M M, let's change that to two M's and see what we get. It's just purely experimentation, and you find all the breakdown of how, where it looks like on the page 17, and it tells you what the Ds mean, like the days of the week, um, what the Ms mean. If you do one, if you do two, if you do four, what you get. Okay, so you can get everything from, I guess you can get J, I guess. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, so it's already preset, like. Yes, so, so four, you're just saying this is what I want. To, to, just, yeah. to display the entire month name. So you notice now, um, instead of having, because I did only two letters, because I only did two M's, it went from the month to at, from actually physically seeing the uh, word February, you see the, the value for February, which is two. Right. Okay. I, I understand now. Yeah. I thought, I thought the number of Ds represented, like, how many digits of Thursday, like how many letters of Thursday would, but I was wrong. I get it now. Yes. It's just four Ds for the entire day yes. worded. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and yeah, I've seen, I've, I've, in the book, they talk about one letter for like J for January, and I'm thinking that's pretty stupid, but okay. But yeah, yeah whatever. All right. And this is possibly the one part that, that um, the internationalization. Okay. This one I have to slow down a little bit for because I haven't done it in a while. Okay, so currency or money is um, every location or region has their own set of currency and their own set of money, their own set of dates and measurements, time, weight and stuff. Everything from kilograms to pounds to meters to acres. Depending on where you live, it can be different. I'm going to tell you a little story really, really quickly. I was first, first time started teaching. And I had a fellow from the Congo, and he was sitting in the back corner. Anyways, long story short, uh, he, he did his Excel, and he left. And the student that sat in his class after him said, there's a problem. Every time I try to type in the number 12, oh, oh, I, I try to put a comma or a period, a comma appears. So I, so I guess, and I, I think he was in the Congo, it's a long time ago, that he actually went into where we're about to go and had somehow or other managed to change it from North America to Congo. So sometimes you will see places where, um, where we see 12.9 uh, for North America, somebody else will see 12,9. So that's the kind of internationalizations that you might see. All right. Oh, is that is that internet? Because I, I I feel like in Europe it's done that way too. For example, um, you know, twenty dollars would be two zero comma zero zero, right? I, if I'm not mistaken, I think in Europe it's done that way too. Is that international? Not yes. Just, so it depends oh, okay. on what, where you are. If that's what they use, then that's how it will be displayed. Okay. But how do you get that? That's that's the question du jour. And if you look at the bottom of page eighteen. They actually go through some of these. You know, they've got the EEC, they've got their euro, um, the dollar symbol. We've got Australia, Canada, USA. Am I missing somebody? Oh shoot, Mexico. Sorry, Mexico. Um, so it's it's set for the software and your computer through your region. So how does Excel know what kind of currency to use? What kind of internationalization does it use? It it's all set up in your regions and your locale. But that's if you ever get into PowerPoint. Um, this is useless trivia. You'll if you remember, terrific. 
the only way to be able to change your your ruler from centimeters to inches is actually going in where I'm going to show you very, very shortly, okay? Um, but it's just one of those neat little tool, cool little things. So let me take you into consolidated income numeric. All right, that is on page 19. Okay. And I'm going to take, we're going to deep dive into our control panel. Don't be afraid of doing this. It's, it's not as scary. And um, depending on what operating system you have, where you find things might be slightly differently located. Not slightly, very differently. Trust me. So I'm going to open up consolidated and I'm just going to keep this control C. And you won't see me find the file, but I will be doing it anyways. Consolidated income numeric. I almost did the wrong one there. Did the first time. All right. And now I'm going to make sure you can see it. I'm going to just go paste control V. Once it, oh no, I can't. Not yet. We're doing okay there. So I've got consolidated income numeric open and I'm going to select D5 to D13. What we're going to do is we're going to actually attach, if you look on the next page, you're, uh, depending on what currency we're going to we're going to use, you're going to see that currency symbol to the left of our values. Okay. It's pretty kind of it's pretty cool. So let me do that first, and then we're going to have a quick deep dive into where you can go and change things. It's a useful thing to know, anyway. So. D5 to D13. I'm going to zoom in and make it a little, a little larger so you guys can see. I know that's always one of the biggest uh, complaints or issues that people have. So D5 to D13. Okay. I actually disagree with this. My rule of thumb is I would never select D5 to D13. I would select D5. I would select the range of cells in the middle here, and I would select the N. The reason is you don't, it's not, it's always possible a new row might be inserted in here. And if a new row is inserted, then suddenly it's got the wrong formatting. So it's really important for me, you'll see me select exactly the range that I want to use. But I'm following the book, and you guys will realize very quickly it's difficult for me to follow the book. So I've selected D5 to D13. Home tab, number format dialog box, number and currency. All right, let's do it. Jump into it. Home tab. Number group, dialog box, currency. And can anybody remember the difference between the accounting and the currency? Or what uh, the, there is a difference, but you can, you'll see it, and I'll explain what it is and why, what it's called. Okay, currency, drop-down symbol. So again, when we're doing this, we are not converting it. We're just making it look like the... Um, this may be very, there's no magical way to do this except for English. Okay. There's a lot of countries, so there's no magical. Let's click down to ink, type in the letter E. And uh, where are you? First time. Oh. Yeah, it is after the uh, dollar. Symbol. Yes, it is. I completely... Did you know that there are that many? Ah, uh, okay. So then the formatting is going to be like that. That's all you're doing. And I wanted to point out. This I should uh, confirm the uh, English United Kingdom, right? I missed that. I beg your pardon? Yeah, I, I just I should choose the English United Kingdom, right? Yes, please. Okay. Yeah. You can do it. The quick and dirty way is to do it here. That's fine. But if you if you do choose to go for your certification, one of the pieces of advice I would give you is if they say use the, uh, the dialog box, use a dialog box. If they say use the drop-down list, use the drop-down list. Even though it gets you the same result, it can impact on being right or wrong. Okay. So I've done that. So it's very, essentially they're both the same. That's just, it's exactly the same here. The, 
And you know, it's still currency, but the only thing is the symbol is slightly different. I wonder, and I'm not going to do this, I wonder. You can also do the same for accounting. So we can have the same accounting format with the dollars, the pound symbol over here, or if you've got whatever symbol it is that you're using. Okay, so this works for both currency and accounting, as well. Um, let's see other thing I want to say about that. Yeah, the currency is. You'll also hear currency called floating dollar. So basically, what that means is a dollar is, or this floating symbol is next to the numbers. So you'll see the pound is snug right next to the one. Um, the pound is snug next to the two. All right, so it's called floating. Uh, they normally call it floating uh, pound or floating dollar. Okay. Useless trivia for the day. Okay, so we've done that. And I forgot to do the negative, so that's not a big deal. I can go to currency once more, follow my instru instructions, and I can just do whichever negative one I want me to use. Two at the bottom. So anything's positive, and then she see that's it. So our negative value is displayed or represented in red. That's not that difficult. Okay. All right. I'm very tempted to use my own recording software because um, I'm, if I find doing the Zoom recording today difficult, I'm going to apply my own formatting my own recording software, it's easier to work with. My screen recorder. It, it doesn't matter like to us, we will appreciate it anyway. No, I'll do what I can. All right, so then got ask us to apply currency symbols for the other countries. Um, and just, it's just, so what you'll do is, and they're saying, I believe they're saying, what are we going to do with the totals? Let's do Cape Town. I'm just going to do one or two of them. Once you've got the, the feel or the gist for the one, the rest will follow suit. All right, so um, C5 to 13 are English. Can I? Can I do it this way? No, but I can do that for Hong Kong. Okay. This one, unfortunately, I, we have to go through the whole fiasco some more. The one thing about um, this is so your accounting or currency um, is there's more than one way to get there. When if you are doing the Microsoft certification, follow exactly the way the book wants or the test wants you to do it. Okay. I'm only gonna do one more because it, it'll waste your time. So it's English R English South Africa. Halfway down the 500 million gazillion of them. This is not like um, in Word and in the font where you can just can do this. Nope, that was me being silly. Okay. I did not get it, did I? Our South Africa, right? Yes. That was more good luck than good judgment. I'm telling you now. Okay, so that's. And you, we could have, if we wanted to, we could have manually gone. You know how we we created our own formatting with the billion and the Deborah. We could have quite easily done that, that ourselves. Just easier the the, the the formats are done for us. So I'm going to leave that one there. But now I'm going to change. The rest of the exercise, it does more of the same. You're applying different formats. Some things you're typing in, some things you're not. So it's essentially what we've done till now. Okay. And then it's going to ask us to change the regional settings in the control panel and observe the effect on the system. Okay. This is where we get to go down the rabbit hole, if you will. Okay, so I'm not sure how much you're going to be able to see. I'm hoping that you will be able to see everything I do. So I'm going to go to new share. And I'm going to... Uh, 
What I'm going to do that you may not be able to see, I'm hoping that you can. Um, let me see anything here. Can I use? Hmm. No, I don't see anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my start. Okay. I'll just go back over here for a second. Here I am. And then share. I'm going to go into my start menu. Um, I'm not sure. I think it's command for uh, Macs, Mac users. Then once I'm in there, you may not be able to see me do this, and I apologize if you can't, is I'm actually going to type in the letter C for control panel. And I didn't do it in the search. All I did was type in C-O-N. It will bring me to the control panel. Actually, this is one of those I normally like to have pin. Okay, pin to start because I use it all the time. Depending on how comfortable you are now navigating to the control panel, I like to have the small icons. That way I get to see everything. And having learned with the control panel some years back, I'm embarrassed to say or not so embarrassed to say, this is my comfort zone right here. So what I'm looking for now, it's going to be depending on what version of, of um, Windows you have, it might sound or look slightly different. But what you're looking is either for the word regional okay um clock language and region so let's see but it will change depending on what we have here i've got region okay bearing in mind that this computer was oh, sorry uh, this uh, this is office sorry yeah excel 2016 i had to think about which one i was doing here so for me, it was regions. Sometimes you'll see clocks. Sometimes you'll see language and regions. You'll see variations thereof. Okay. And so it says change date, date, time, or number format, and select French, France. Now, I haven't done anything here. Oh, this is a scary part. Yeah, also I'm using Mac. Uh, I don't have an idea. Should I go to the religion? Or it, it might be, it's either region or, um, for me, it's either uh, region or language, but region, tent, or locale, L-O-C-A-L-E. So it might be locale and region for you. But you'll see what you're always looking for, if I'm not mistaken, is the little globe symbol, and there should also be a little clock or something there too. Okay, so what am I doing here with France, France, France. Okay. Yes. This one, it did work. I don't know if you were able to see this or not. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry if you can't, but I typed in the letter F for, and it actually went down to um, Pharaohs, which I did not with now was in Denmark. Okay, so it's French, France. Not French Canadian people, French France. Oh, there is French. Yeah, there's French. Uh, Congo. The uh, French. There we go. How can it be that difficult? Um, let's see. Okay. And we may or may not see a difference because don't forget, I haven't done everything in here. So you're... No, we don't see a difference here. It's still the same. Um, but... If you click on your the bottom right hand corner on your taskbar, you'll see everything related to, to the French there. Okay. Now we're going to go to the additional. I should have stayed in there. Deborah, you should have paid attention to the video. So start. And I kept keep the control panel there. So I'm going to go back into it once more. And I'm going to go back into region. I see the time clock and I see the um, globe, that's what I'm looking for. And then I'm going to go to additional settings. Okay. In additional settings, just because we're here, I'm going to get to show you where um, you can actually go change from inches to centimeters here. So currency symbol. I'm in the right place. Good number. Currency. And so the symbol here is EU or Europe. Okay.
depends on where you are. Yeah, should I uh, should I uh, choose the currency Canadian dollar or something, right? Um, the book asks us to do the French uh, euro. Um, Canadian dollar, French Canadian dollar makes no difference. It's still a dollar sign, the smallest dollar. I'm going to do it so we can uh, see what it looks like. And um, I'm not sure. I, Debbie, I just want to clarify, we have to go our, uh, into our computer settings to change the currency. It doesn't Excel oh. allow us to change the currency it, within Excel alone? No. Oh, sorry. Yes and no. When you are doing these system changes here, um, what is actually happening is right down inside the system, it changes everything. So it's kind of a bottom-up kind of effect. And what is happening is now anything that's related to the euro or the commas or I didn't do everything here because I'm just a, I'm because of my computer I'm just a wee bit nervous to go any further. Um, so now I have to remind myself to go back to Canadian English and make sure I do the correct accounting on that. So um, have a look at it. If you want to give it a go, it, you cannot hurt anything. The only thing is make sure that if you switched it on. You switch off. That's the only thing to remember. You're looking for the region or locale, location or region, and you're looking for the globe and the time. And so I'm going to say my format is going to be E. Okay, English. I'm really going to regret doing this now. That's okay. English Canada. And you notice here, this is our default. If we wanted to change our date, month, and time, to something slightly different and it's universal, not just Excel, not just applied to one of those, those uh, cells. This is where you do it from here. So when you insert a date, boom, that's what it looks like. So if you go to sh um, short date, you can change it from here. Long date, you can change it from here. Okay, your hour, minutes, and seconds. This is universal. So I'm going to go back to my additional, and then I'm going to go to my currency, and yep, everything's back to normal. Okay, so numbers. Okay, let's see. Ah, yes. Useless piece of information of the day. Um, if you are working with something like PowerPoint, and you, when you open up PowerPoint, one of the things you can do is have the ruler on the top and to the left. The default is always going to be metric or centimeters. You can change it from centimeters to, in, uh, to inches if you want to in here, and, and that's uh, it's a metric to US. That's the U, That's my useless piece of trivia of the day. Okay, and then okay, and then down here in my status bar, my 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 task bar, it goes back to the correct date and time, and uh, the correct language for me. Okay. Knowing what we know now, you should, oh, you can try um, the, the continuing exercise 2425. If you are uncomfortable about working with your uh, control panel, then don't, I don't, don't do it. As far as I know, in the Microsoft certification, that's never been a question could, that you cannot change your anything in the control panel anyways, even if you wanted to. So that's, that's something good to know. Oh, sweet. Okay. So that brings us, let's make sure I get exercise there. So all the exercises um, in lesson one, so 24, 25. Okay. Some of them sk I'm skipping because it's more of the same. If you've learned the one concept one place, then it applies here. Now we're going to be learning something slightly different, and this is universal, whether it be Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Access, any one of them. Um, every style, let me get out of here for a second here. Um, 
there are there are preset styles that we have. What font type is it? What font size is it? And we you've probably seen something like this in cell styles here. These are these are presets here. We can create our own new style, and um, that, it doesn't make a difference. But you can create your own new style by switching on switching on off some of the features in uh, modifying styles. Okay, I'm going to leave the reading to you. I just wanted to give you a little bit of a preface about it. Uh, there are a couple of rules and regulations, if you will. Uh, the one rule, oh, there you go. Hi, Mo. I'll let you in there. All right. So Mo is in the room. Perfect. Um, a couple of things, styles defined individually for each workbook. So depending on what you're doing, you may, um, you, you can share a style with workbook to workbook. I'm not, we'll learn about that one much later on. Okay. If you change style, it change, it, if I created a style and then I went and modified it and I applied it to all these cells here, all of these cells would automatically change. This is the same concept. If you've worked with Word, it's exactly the same as what's going on there. Okay. You can create new styles by using one of the four. You can use formatting in the cells. You can use what you've already got in the cell. You can use the display format cells. And you, like I said, you can merge two or three different styles together. <laughs> or, or transfer. I call them attaching them. Years ago when you did that, they never called it merging. But what you would do is you would attach a style from this workbook and you would attach it to that workbook. But now it's slightly different done. So read the theory. So now I'm going to do this is going to be fun. Is travel insurance premium styles. Um, if you have a good foundation in Word, this is going to be pretty straightforward for you. So I'm going to go and close this one. We'll leave this open just in case we need it for anything more. And I'm going to open up Travel Insurance Premium Styles. If I type the letter T, and I'm not if, even if you can't see it, T, that'll bring me down to the let where the, everything starts with T. So Travel Insurance Premium Body Headings. Okay. There are two different types of styles. You've got the body and the heading. Um, we're, we're going to explore both of those. And again, that's universal word as it is with PowerPoint, as it will with Excel. Excel differs because they're dealing more with numbers, but the same concepts apply. OK, so there's a little bit of fiddling around, but the first thing I need to do, I'm going to stop, stop sharing for one second and then come back and do it again. Hey, Mo. Good to see you there, sir. I'm going to go back down. So now. For step one, no matter what we do, is enable editing. Today, Deborah would be good. Thank you. Okay. It's asking us to select B1 to K1. Well, that makes sense to me. B1 to K1, even though there's nothing in there. B, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. And I. Okay, good stuff. Okay, so Mo, what we did before, everybody else will get you up to speed, but we introduced my mystery question of the day today, so that would be something for us to work with. So I, right now, I'm working towards the end of lesson one, and we're, we're creating, modifying, or even deleting, you know, you can, you can create and modify, but you cannot delete a user's file. Okay. V1 to K1, home tab, styles group. Cell styles, I'm going to grab the heading one. So home tab, styles group. Cells, uh, be, be aware because next, uh, next lesson we'll be dealing with tables. So cell styles are individual styles, table or formatting as table, whole different animal. So the one that they have preset for us is heading one. Hopefully I'm doing the right place. So B1 to K1. That kind of, all right, if that's what they want to do, then it's going to be 
A2. I hate reading other people's stuff because I, I never quite know what it is we want to do. Normally, if I was working with this, what I would be, I would be taking full advantage of my format painter, but because we're dealing with self-styles, I'm going to go to the book exactly. So I am, if, I, if you see me selecting the wrong cell, please, I'm not offended if you let me know. Okay. So I'm going to select A2, Home tab, Styles group, Cell styles. And again, it's going to be for heading one of this. Okay. And then I'm going to grab all the years. So it's going to be B2 to uh, K2. And it's going to be heading to so Home Tab Styles Group. Take a breath. And I'm going to select Heading 2. Mm -hmm. Bear in um, mind, Deborah, the, that was adding four, not two. Yes. The text is, in the text is adding ah. four. It's almost like I suggested you do that just before. Actually, I did. Honestly, this time I really did mess up that time. It wasn't a fake messing up or a faux messing up. It was a oops on purpose. <laughs> oops, right. But no, that's great. It's just, I, I'm just laughing at myself. The timing is like perfect. All right, so we're done heading four. Um, what I did want to point out was depending on what theme you use, this might, not might, it can and will impact the colors, the fonts, the styles uh, that you use. It'll still be the same style, but slightly different. All right, so A3 to A11, every fiber of my being wants to go home, to, wants to use the format painter. A3 to 11 and I think I can get this done right. Home tab, styles, group, and I'm going to select heading four. Isn't it amazing how quickly that you've gone from a bland waste or a bland box of numbers and values? Now your eyes are drawn to the headings and your eyes, the column headings, and now your eyes are drawn to the, the row of headings. And that's what it is you want to do. Okay. Oh, Joe. All right. Okay. So it's B3 to K3. So B3. What is this information? This cell contains a date string represented with only two digits for the year. So it's just saying FYI, by the way, this looks slightly different. So just if you see that it's just information for us. So it's going to be A3 to A11, B3 to K3. So B3, K3. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, do Essentially, we're going to do rows. Okay. Once you've done one or two, it's fine. So I've done B3 to K3. And I'm not going to do the control. I'm going to try and do the control key, but my dexterity is not that good. So every other um, row I'm going to select. So I've got the first one. I'm going to press the control key on my keyboard. I don't know about the mouse. It's what you would use to almost like the control key. So then I'm going to select. B5 to K5. Whoa. Keeping my control key down for the Microsoft Windows. B7 to K7. There has to be a better way to do this. And there is B9. Nine. Not terrible. All right. So I've done that. And 20% accent, five, I'm out. The first one is 60% accent, five. The second one is 20% accent, five. So do the first one and then the second one. So this is when you will actually see, a, if we apply a, a theme to it, this is where you'll actually see it. So, the reason I stopped here is because I was teaching in the morning at about a week or so ago, and I was doing cell styles, and I completely forgot, and I went over to the fill here. The difference between the fill here in the font group is it's just the fill. It's not the font type. It's not the font color. It's not the fill background. It's not the order or boundaries. It's just one thing. In the cell styles, it's everything is complete together. So the first one is going to be 60% accent font. So 60%. 
There you go. And then the same thing. Um, I'm not going to do the control key. I want to show you, not for not for the certification, but I just want to show you the power of the um, format painter. So you don't have to constantly do select, 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 select. So cell styles again. Home tab, styles group, cell styles. And I'm not mistaken, is it 20%? Yeah, 20%. Okay, format painter, double click, and I can just select the entire row, oops, and format painter, the next blank, the next white row, and the next white row, and then I turn off my format painter. Yeah, it is easy. <laughs> Thank you. You bet it is. So if you double click, here's the thing, if you double, if you click once, and you use the format painter, it goes to one location. All right, so you, you click once, it, it, it paints once. If you double click on it, so if I double click on the format painter, it keeps going until I turn it off. So I double click, so it allowed me to go to this row, to this row, to this row. When I got to the bottom here, I turned off my format painter. So I switch it on, use it, switch it off, use it. So, I hope you guys don't mind me adding my own little bits and pieces about Excel, Excel in general. Oh, of course not. It's helpful. So now that gets that's five page oh, 27, step number five, six, seven, eight, and nine. All right. And then they're going to say to us, well, this looks beautiful. And you remember I told you in the beginning of this, this part of the lesson, if one changes, they all change. Let's see if that's really, really, really true. Okay. So I'm going to select B2. Bear with me one minute here. I'm just going to close. Close. And the problem is, because I'm in the bedroom upstairs, and, and the heat, as you know, obviously the heat rises, so I go from freezing to boiling, to freezing, to boiling. Okay, so I'm in B2, and that format is, I don't know, so I'm going to go and find out. Home tab, styles group. And you notice when I go into styles group, that there is a, an outline around the heading force. So that tells me what format is applied there. All right, so right mouse click, heading four, and modify. If you, this is exactly the same as if you, if you apply the skill in Word, it does exactly the same. So right mouse click, heading four. Apply, modify, duplicate, delete, duplicate, or come back and visit at a later date. But modify, what do we want to do to this? Okay, so it gives you the name. Okay, so at this point, we're not changing the name. We're just changing how it looks. Okay, we probably can change the name. So what are we going to do to it? Font 16. All right, that's easy enough. Um, no panicking because I'm going to go to format. And you notice here when I went into, you see the blue line outside the, the, the button format and the ellipsis for the three little dots there? That tells me even if you're having a panic attack, it has to be the place that I need to go to. All right, so then I can go to font. I'm doing this from memory, and 16. Okay, do they want us to do anything more? Oh, I know. Let, let's let's go let, go bigger, go home. Let's make it italic. Let's make it bold italic. All right, so we've made it 16 according to the rules. Um, Pinara is coming in, and so I'm now breaking the rules by up to bold and italic. Okay, and okay. Voila! Isn't that all? I just love it when that happens. Mm -hmm. All right, I know. It is, it is yes, it works. It works. It does. Yeah. All right. So, I've done that. Now we're going to create our own uh, style, essentially the same concept. All right, so where do I need to be? Not necessarily given, this part's a little confusing, but you don't need to be anywhere 
at this point because you're creating something from scratch. Uh, not like we just did here. So home tab styles group. Breathe. And go down to new cell style. It's going to say to us. This was, uh, remember this was grayed out before. It's, I'm just going to call it. Oh, new title. Is it new title? New title it is. I can't call it whatever I want. And what am I going to do with the new title? I'm going to go to the number format. Blah, blah, blah. Where are you? Turn them off. Number. Alignment. Alignment. Order. And fill. So what I'm saying is none of these guys, basically your protection still applies, which it would have to, and the font would have to apply. Okay. And then format, always going to be going in here. This is where the magic happens. Font heading. And we're going to make the changes. Times New Roman. Again, I can type in the, in the, um, it's, you know, I can just type in, in the font type, I can just type in T, or maybe I can't, I can T, the Times of Roman, I am, yep, okay, fine, make a light, I have no choice but to scroll down, sorry. Why am I not seeing this? Uh, no, you can write it will be come. I there think it is. So. Yeah. 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 That's just a case of being patient with myself. Okay. Bold italic 12 and black text one. So bold italic. I've really got that. 12. And uh, and color is black text one. Like that one? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so too. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything more? Okay. And then, so we've given it a new name. Then I can go okay. If I now, if I go and apply it to something, then we'll see the change. So I'm going to select B2 to K2, and we're going to apply our new title. And then I'm going to then, once I've applied it, I want to go back into our cell styles. So. B2 to K2, so it's all going to be gone there anyways. This was not here before. New title, here it is. If you are working with a company that has a specific set of colors or fonts or themes that they use, um, that way you can actually incorporate it into your workbooks. Okay, save and close. How am I doing with colors here? Yesterday, I spoke briefly about the difference between the standard colors and the uh, custom colors. Now we're going to dig, dig a little bit deeper into that one. We are going to get to where I want to. Perfect. Okay. My goal is by the end of today that we're going to get into uh, lesson two. There's a certain page on lesson two I want to get to. All right. We'll see how time goes. Okay. So I'm going to save and close travel insurance colors. Okay, so I'm not bothering to save and close because I'll close it down once we're finished here. So now I'm going to go to my Windows Explorer and I'm going to find the travel insurance premium colors. Like, and I'm going to find one of my favorite tools is going to be used very, oh shoot, I just made a line around this. Okay. Okay, I'm going to enable editing, then I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So all the preset stuff has been done for us. I'm just going to move the chat out of the way for now. Okay. Um, custom colors. Can I, Has anybody worked with the colors before? I'll show you where they are in a second, where the custom colors are. Um, I'm just going to grab a color here. Home tab, font group, fill. 
And if you go down to more colors here, there's your standards and there's your customs. Okay, so this is the two places that we're actually going to end up going to. Deborah, could you please just uh, stop sharing and share it again because... Sure. Oh, yeah. oh, thank you for reminding me. I appreciate that. Yeah. I need somebody to put a great big sign that says, share again, Deborah, share again. Premium colors. Okay. What I was what I was saying is a difference, and you'll see it soon enough. So go to fill, and then you could go down to more colors. When you go down, you've got the standard colors as your presets, and then you've got your custom colors. Okay. So you'll always see those that, that breakdown there. I'm going to select B3 to K3. Okay. Fill color, standard, orange. Um, B3 to K3. For those of you who have worked with um, PowerPoint or Photoshop or something, this is old territory for you. Okay, so home tab. Font group and fill color. So home tab, font group, fill color. So then from there, I'm going to select standard colors orange. Just to remind you, the difference between standard colors and theme colors are standard, doesn't matter what theme you apply to it, orange will always be orange, will always be orange, will always be orange. So that's why the expression standard. So then B5 to K5. Once you see how I start this off, it'll make a lot of sense. Okay. Um, fill color, drop down, more colors, standard tab if necessary, and another color. So basically we are creating another, exactly like I showed you in the beginning, we're going to create our own new standard colors. So, so it doesn't matter, no matter what font, no matter what thing you're going to use, this color we're going to use will always stay as is. So, um, hmm. Font group. Okay, more colors. And I'm just going to grab this guy just because it's here. Okay. Is there anything else I need to do? Okay. No wonder. Let's all look here. This was not here before. Okay, so that's that's something slightly different for us. Okay. Yes, it's can. You can have a lot of fun with it. So th that's basically, now I've created my own standard color. I'm going to add, it's not in the, can I do custom tab? So, yeah, I can do it. So then at the B7, exactly what I would have wanted to do, highlight again. And home tab, font group, fill. More. So we've got the standard and we've got I should, I did the wrong thing there, that's bad. Okay, standard here. And what I should have done. Okay, so you've got standard, got custom. Now I'm going to do the, actually I'm going to come back in here to this one here. I'm going to go and I'm going to go to custom. And I'm going to grab the blue. Okay. And then I'm going to grab one more color from standard. So we can see that just there's a de defined difference as opposed to undefined. Home tab font group. So I've done standard. Um, let's try and do it's going back. So let's go. I've done a mixture of summer standard, summer custom, so I'm going to go to the page layout tab. I'm going to grab one of these themes here just to see what happens. Some colors stay the same and some change. So the orange, because it was a standard, stays the same. Uh, if the green one, you notice the third row down, the font size and type change, but the color stays the same. So you can see the ones that I applied the standard to, and you can see the ones that I didn't. Go back to office. So just nifty little exercise. So that's a little bit more of colors. And so ironically, the next thing we're going to be doing is custom themes. And... I suspect we're not going to get into 
Okay. We might be able to do this. Okay. What I'm going to do, because I would like to be able to wrap up today uh, with the first part of module uh, lesson two, um, is I'm going to ask everybody to finish the lessons in or each of the exercises in lesson one. The custom theme is pretty straightforward. Again, it's universal. It applies to Word, Excel, Access, PowerPoint, and the like. Um, I don't think there's any surprises in that one. Okay. Um, but let me go into custom theme very, very quickly. I just want to show you where things are, and then that allows me to jump into lesson two. And I will be in the place that I want to be for purpose. Okay, so I'm going to give you the quickest lesson ever in creating or editing or, or actually even modifying a custom theme. Every time we open every color, every font, every type, every style, every everything is predefined in our theme. Okay. And from just pretty much theme, so I'm going to do the same thing. I know I have to share again, so I'm going to keep that in mind. The all important enable editing, which allows everything, and you should be able to see it. Okay. And again, they're just giving us a quick refresher on how themes work. You learn, you would have learned it in the first book, but it doesn't hurt to refresh your brain. Um, page layout, themes group, and we're going to go and look at the things that we have. That's step one. Page layout group. Okay, and if somebody could read the message, that would be awesome for me. Thank you. And then go to themes. Our preset, unless we'd say otherwise, is always going to be the office theme. That's what we open up. Unless we make any changes, that's the one that we open up with every time. The reason is your office has to have some kind of structure to it. Okay. Um, I'm just going to hover all over these. And you can see as things change the font size, the spacing, the color, the font type changes. This is called Live Preview, so I'm going to stay in the office for now. Nobody's reading that for me. Okay. Um, somebody's, oh, sorry, Mo. Uh, I don't necessarily see these messages. I apologize. I don't see these messages until I jump back to chat. Um, yesterday's was not the most successful. I will share it, but it took me forever to uh, compile it or compress it or do whatever it is they do to it. So I have it ready and I will post it in, I will create a, a drive for, I will use the folder I use for my MLS students for you. All right. I think today's lesson was very easy. It was a piece of cake compared to yesterday's. Um, you know, um, yes, tasks it is. that we have to do. Um, uh, the, does it get like like more complicated than what we did yesterday? Like that formula. Like I, I, just, uh, yes. I, I just hate how there's a dollar sign between um, the letter number on one side, and there's a dollar sign in front of everything on the other side. Like it just. Like I guess that's just yeah. the style. That's the way you're supposed to do it. I can I can memorize how to do that. It just it wasn't working for me. Um, and I think um, I'm wondering if you know if you have a um, I because I have I realized I have Microsoft Home Office in Student 2019. Could that be the reason why it wasn't working for me? Actually, the Home Office Student 2019 should be just fine. Okay. Um, it, it could be the understanding of the absolute and relative cell reference. Um, okay. I'm going to give you, I think I gave you yesterday the handout with my favorite, one of my favorite YouTubers. She has a great... I would love um, that. Uh, so that was in the, in the thread, yeah, um, in the uh, file yesterday. Her name is Layla Garani, and uh, she, she is, she's so good when she puts... When she explains about how absolute and absolute relative and yeah because yesterday i wanted to ask you can you tell us like you know give us examples of absolutes 
Ooh. values or whatever, and then relative. Like, just give me yeah. a whole bunch of what examples so yeah. I could, um, so I could like help remember to differentiate them one from another. Um, but I mean, did, sorry, did you say you already sent that to us, or are you going to send that? It was in my, um, it was in my uh, G drive, the folder that I shared with everybody yesterday. I think. Oh. If it I just posted it. You have it. I just yes, put that back in the chat. Oh. Yeah, this is Mike's thank office. So is something much. different. Mike's office is for the MOS. Um, I'm gonna. Okay. Please. Post the second one. Bernard. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, that's the only one I see. Uh, Bernard, if you can send me an email and remind me to post that for you. Oh yeah, the drive is there. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Perfect. Um, if what you'll be looking when you go in there is there is a Word document and an Excel document. And let me just let me go in and fix them tonight. Make sure that there's a folder specifically for you guys. And I will put them in there. It gives you the video. It gives you the instructions. It gives you the hyperlink where to find it. And also, I have included some, some practice exercises so that you can apply those, you can apply the skill of the absolute versus the relative. So it takes you from zero to a hero. And pretty good. All right. Okay, Great. no problem. Thanks. And it's this, and don't want anybody to think for one second, it, understanding the fundamentals of absolute versus relative cell reference is key. So it's almost like if you don't know how to bake, uh, pie, how can you go and, I don't know, bake a cake or something? If you don't know how to uh, whip an egg and flour, you can't bake cakes. You have to learn the basic concepts of this. But now a very important question, good question. And your responsibilities are going to be from now on, if I don't provide something that you, I say I'm going to, whoever it is, please bother me until you see it. Okay? I'm not offended. It's just, just because there's a lot of things happening like in everybody else's life. Did I hear somebody else? Okay. So I'm just going to, uh, looking at the time, 3.36, we're not going to be able to get, but we are, we are. Okay, so I'm going to do another five minutes or so with the themes just to get you familiar or reacclimate you with themes. Okay. And then I'm going to work on the first part of lesson two, which is range names. And range names, again, it's one of those things I want to make sure everybody is. It's one of those, you must know how to do this in your day-to-day -day activity, even if you're not even doing Microsoft certification. Range names, key. So let me get this done. So we already know where they are. And so there's a couple of ways of uh, modifying or editing the themes. Okay. And as we hovered over each one of those themes when we went in there, that's what Live Preview just shows you what it looks like. That's all Live Preview does. Okay. You can download themes from the internet if you feel so inclined. Then they're saying to us, by the way, apply these custom themes. Um, if I give you guys any tests or anything and you are Mac versus PC, if you don't have the parcel theme, find something similar. Okay. And um, there also, every now and then, you may come across a computer where all the themes have been erased. Um, if you ever do that, email me immediately. I know how to fix that. I found that I, that happened to me once where they were all just kind of pulled out of my, my system. So, okay, so I've got that done. I've applied the parcel theme. Now we're going to create our new custom theme based on the one that we're using. So we're going to use the foundation of this and make some changes. Okay, so you notice it doesn't matter where I select because everything now is internal. So I'm going to go to, uh, so page that colors, that's my themes. Make sure I'm in the right place. Yes, here are colors. And when you click on the colors, you see there are little groups. So this is the office theme of colors. Um, somewhere down here is the parcel theme of colors. Uh, there's, oh, depending on whatever it is that we're doing, if I'm not mistaken. So high blues, low blues, there's all these preset groups of colors. Okay. And so I'm going to go to the arrow for accent one. Nice colors. 
and so each section see so your background text um, the accent colors so this is what they're asking us to work with the accent one and you notice these are the because we've already applied the theme color this is why it looks like we, we do we have what we have so I'm just going to grab any one of them and I'm just going to grab an accent two and I'm going to grab maybe text background light and I'm going to say save and I'm going to give it a name yeah, okay so dev one so now it's custom and we'll I'll show you where you'll see the color so okay save and so go to themes go to colors this is the one I've just created so now that that can that is applied can be applied to the theme okay um done it with new colors so save okay so then it's going to ask I'm, I'm just going ahead of myself here but sorry guys I did that name saved it so the color of the bottom borders or whatever colors I changed are all up here it's custom I've given it more so page layout colors right mouse click new colors and with that edit and you, again you go back into it so I'm not going to go any further this is basically how you do it follow the instructions and it's more of the same it's not the most exciting thing I do want to because we're at the 340 mark I want to wrap up the end of the day with a powerful punch um, Yeah, also, I have a, I am using Mac. Uh, <laughs> however, I cannot create a new uh, color. Really? Okay, I'm gonna uh, see. There might be. There should be a way to do that. Let me see if I can find that. I'm gonna write myself a little note here. Um, uh, yeah, I have. I have colors. Uh, mm. When I click that one, uh, uh, the page uh, has not a new create button okay or options okay i'm going to customize colors sorry to, but you have to customize colors not just yes. click okay, on okay. It, but okay i'm learning more about max day by day with with this uh this virtual teaching i've learned more about mac in the last year than i ever knew okay um so the rest of it is relatively the same. If you run into any problems when you do this, we can come back and review it again. But I want to wrap up today. Um, is at the end of lesson one, there are some questions. Okay. And I would like to be able to review these questions with you guys next week. I'm just going to go through them quickly. So it gives you a week to review them. And I will touch base with what the answers are. First thing when we come in on Thursday, that'll be the first thing we do um, when we're reviewing the questions. When you answer the review questions, you can put as much or as little detail as you want to in it. Like they've got a question like, which of the following is not a valid conditional format? Okay. Um, so the, the, the secret to doing the questions in this book is the first question always relates to the first part of that lesson. The second is sequentially after that. So it's very methodical, very ordered. So the first question you guarantee is going to be the very beginning of um, that lesson or close enough to it. And then as you progress through the questions, and will be here. Um, And as you progress through the lesson, they've actually made it much nicer. They used to make us write out paragraphs upon paragraphs upon paragraphs of text. Thankfully for us now, it's A, B, C, or D. Okay. So they've made it much easier for you guys over time. So as you get to the very end of these questions, it does take time. But as you get to the very end of these questions, then you'll realize that you're at the end of that lesson. What is the purpose of reading these, doing these questions? It, it reinforces what, you're, what you've learned, your muscle memory. So it's reinforcing that muscle memory 
and again prepares you A for the Microsoft certification or B just generally knowing Excel in general. All right, so there is a reason, there is a method behind that madness. And please do, um, you can do them as a group, you can do them individually, you can share your answers. We're, um, just first thing come Thursday when we get together, that's the first thing I'm going to be launching into. Okay. There, yeah. So that's that. I want to, as I say, wrap up with something called range names. You'll hear name ranges, range names, um, any number of, of things. I'm going to open up. Okay, so this is the beginning of lesson two. This is key stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up whatever file it is, and I'm going to go through income statement create range. Okay. Yes, I know you can't see me yet, but you will in a minute. If you leave here with nothing more today, this is going to be the, one of the most useful pieces of, of help I'm going to, or advice I'm going to give to you. Um, as we progress through worksheets, if you notice when I was talking to you yesterday, I sometimes I use cell references like A5 to G15 or um, a19 and A20 and A21, but those are sterile cell references. Think about if you had my phone number and that's all you had, you didn't know about Deborah, all you had was 647, 865, 6555. That's the reference to me. That's very sterile. It's very, there's nothing unique about it. And you'd have to do a lot of memory remembering to try and remember my phone number versus my name. But if you say Deb or Debbie, then suddenly you can you know what you're talking about. So that's the cell references when we normally do it. So I'm going to select these two cells here, C5 and C6. Okay. But if I told you that it could be the sales cell or the other rev other revenue cell. Suddenly, that means more to us. Okay, um, so the actual naming convention is to make it easier for us human beings. When you have masses of data, using range names makes it easier to be able to manage and understand the data that you have. Um, for instance, here uh, to get to the so um, to get to uh, total revenue. It at this point is going to be equals uh, sales plus with my plus, and this is where you guys mathematics have got to come in. Uh, so it's C five plus C six. What if I said to you total revenue was a total was com uh, a combination of sales plus other revenues? Now your brains immediately go, yes, I know what that means. Okay. So that's what a range name, it gives it a name versus a, a cell reference or references. Really useful if you're doing formulas and functions, especially as we get through the more complex formulas and functions. That being said, you will not use range names all the time. But they're a very useful tool for us to have. There are some rules regarding range names. Um, and I'm going to show you all the methods to, I'm going to show you the methods to create range names. And then I'm going to show you my favorite. I'm going to identify my favorite method. Okay. So I have this workbook open. And there's another question. All right. I don't know what it is. Okay. Yep. Yeah, beginning of uh, lesson two. Okay. Thank you. So it's asking, so page 38, so I've done the theory, yep, yeah, 38, yes, you're, Kate, you're correct, thank you. No, what, no wonder you keep ever being older there. So it asked me to select cells C6, C5, and C6, very sterile, okay? And then it's going to ask me in the formulas bar, define name group and define name, all right? Then it's going to ask me to give it a name. So let me do that. So I'm selecting five, C5 and C6. First couple of times you do this, it's a little bit more, it's, it's a bit awkward, but practice enough to become second nature to you. So formula, formula tab, 
defined name group, and you've got my favorite is the create name from selection. I'm telling you that now. It says define name. Okay. And let's see what it gives us. You get you get the name. If you use define name, this method, you get to choose the scope of this name only exists in the sheet, or this name is available everywhere. So it's Think about this as if I have a range called Deborah, but I need to refer to sales with Deborah for each sheet or I want to ac access them from each sheet, I would say my scope is going to be the workbook, which means everything. So you can only ever have one Deborah in the entire workbook. You can have Deborah 1, Deborah 2, Deborah 3. Okay. So the scope is how wide is it going to be available it's going to be the workbook available or the sheet okay and so at this point they're saying workbook i believe okay and revenues so it says sheet one and here you see the dollar signs here so okay and you notice here this is the name box we, we you saw that when you were working through the core book and so that is the really easy way to uh, apply a range name. So if I was to set, take Plan of Ventures, I could give it any name there in the range name. And sorry, in the name box. You also see in the name box all sorts of stuff. So if there's any other range names here, you'll see it. Next week when we get into tables, you'll see those appear in here too. So anything that has been given a a little tag, if you will, you will see that little tag in the name box as well as the name manager. Okay. So I've done that C5 to C6. And we, we've looked in the name box and we can see it. Then we're going to do C10 to C17. Okay. And then we go to, speaking of which, they would like us to use the export. Okay. I'm going to do capitals just to see if there's any differences in what we see when we go back into it. Uh, <laughs> I should have done it a little bit further because it says, um, so ask me to select C7. Um, equals sum revenue. So the function is equal sum. So instead of doing C5 and C6, Revenues is a little bit more uh, easier for the human being to remember. And if you've got masses of data, it's much easier to be able to select revenue than it is A15 to G5069. Okay. So I'm just going to do equals sum. There's a variety. Next week, we're also going to get into uh, how to a nice refresher on uh, formulas and functions. I've got a very strict set of rules that I use myself formulas and functions. I'm going to share that with you. But right now, so it's equal sum. I have to make sure I do this correctly. Oh, I do get to type it in. Okay. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, I can't really zoom in any more than that, but I'm going to go left bracket. I'm going to start typing in the letter revenue. And you're going to see what happens down in the little drop down list below here. R E and you notice you've these three top three are formulas, or yeah, functions rather. And the one on the bottom is revenues little box here. Double click on that guy. And bracket. So as soon as we highlight it, same thing as before, blue font for the and the range that is selected is blue. So if we had another range, it will be red. If we had another range, it will be purple or green. So everything is always color coordinated. Okay. Sometimes you're going to be in formulas where um, you can't do this. And I'm going to show you how to. I'll, it's not quite as easy as it looks on the surface. Enter. So it automatically says whatever the range is, I'm going to go and total it up and apply the sum to it. And so we've done C5 and C6.
So we've done a C10 to C16. Okay, so in C18. We're almost done. So in C18, same thing, equals sum. Um, and this time I'm going to divert a little bit from the book to show you the other way to do it. So it's equals. Some formulas, some simple basic formulas like sum, average, or summary ones like sum, average, max, min, and a goodly chunk of them will allow you to omit the last parenthesis or the, the, the bracket. What do I mean? I'm going to show you right now. So it's going to be EXP. And so you see here that uh, you've got functions. When you see that little, that little triangle, that means that this formula is still available but it's being, um, it's, it's still available to us, but they're eventually not going to use it anymore. Um, so it's being transitioned out. So just saying, by the way, this is one of our old formulas or functions, just to let you know. So then I can just double click on the expenses here. And I can, because it is a simple summary function, I can just press the enter key because it knows what to do. Or if you're like me, you like to just to err on the side of caution. All right. Um, oh, goody. So I probably got a little bit ahead of myself here. You notice that I've got sales. Well, let's let's do it from the rent, and I'm I've. I'm going to select from B10 to um, let's just do B10 to C17. As I said, this is the be if you're doing a lot of this easiest way to do range names. Home, sorry, uh, formula tab, defined name group. Create from selection. When you do the create from selection, Excel is kind of intuitive. So it says, oh, do you want me to use whatever's to my left? So for C10, it will apply the range name rent. For C11, it'll apply the name telephone. 12, it'll do in internet, vote to copy, and so on. I'm also going, actually, you know what? I am also going to do one with, when you see I'll do one thing at a time. So, yep. So, and then I can say uh, photocopy or rent. So, it will actually, whatever was to the left, it's going and given it a name. Okay. It's not, remember I said to you about, I'm going to put a capital. Does it matter? No. There are some characters and symbols and things you cannot put in a range name. And I'm going to just probably show that to you. Oh, no, it actually goes right exactly the next thing. So, okay, so total expenses. What I want to do is I want to give this cell a name. Okay, so I'm going to select C18, B18 and C18. I'm going to do the same thing, create from selection. We're going to look at how it addresses or deals with um, spaces because it cannot have spaces. So create a selection, left and OK. So let's see, you'll notice it says total underscore expenses. OK. If I tr I'm going to try and make a mistake here. So in B1, I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it space. When I press the enter key, Usually I'm not supposed to do that, or maybe I didn't do it right. Anyways, you not you cannot start with a space, and there are certain characters that you cannot use in the range name. These characters are uh, or codes. They are codes that are used within the operating system itself, like forward slash, backslash, colon, 
um, quite um, greater than, lesser than, all of those characters or codes and space, of course, are used in the system. So that's why they cannot be used here. Um, is is the space uh, used for something? Uh, it shouldn't be. So I'm going to uh, so I'm going to use net. I'm just going to say equals. And I'm just going to make sure this. Okay. So what I'm going to do is. Uh, C7 minus total expenses. You notice total expenses has the total underscore expenses. So Excel actually inserted, instead of having a space, it actually inserted the underscore form. So I'm going to try and force it to do this. I, I hope I can. So define name, um, space, space, code. You're not supposed to work. It's not supposed to allow a total. I just made a real liar out of myself. Um, um, for me, it's just uh, change uh, to the name without the space in the beginning. Yep, it just kind of kicks me to the curb. No. I think I think it maybe it just uh, recognizes that uh, you put leading spaces and it just eliminates mm -hmm. it. I think maybe if you put a space between two words like net income or total expenses, then yeah, like then this one here, there. yeah. Oh, sorry, total revenue here. I um, so we've got total expenses, net income. Oh, here we yeah, go. Yeah, like Alan said, maybe like when you press tab or you leave the cell, um, it's reformatting it for you. It could be, or I press the oh, enter key, but it's, I know. it is one of those keys. If you want to demonstrate it, maybe center. Um, like make center. A nope, that should not no? make a difference. But I, I'm thinking if it's something is centered, it won't let us do that. Nope, doesn't Create care. From section. Okay. No, it don't care. It really doesn't. But you notice I've got total expenses here, and I did it there. Um, so it's total underscore expenses. Um, I'm going to see if I can force this to, to do this one here. So let's try. My, see, it won't even allow me to do it. So I'm going to go back in here again. I'm going to go pipe. Yep, it does not, it, it doesn't even recognize the pipe. So it, there are some characters it just absolutely will not use. Um, so that's the range name. We're going to come back and visit that a lot anyways. Um, and my useless trivia note for the, so, uh, oh, yes, one more thing. Every now and then, this is going to be the last thing because I've got to run in about two minutes. If I'm going, I'm going to be using, let's say, the average of these cells here. Okay, nice, easy formula here. So equals average. Okay, and I'm going to go with that. I can possibly start typing in, and it works. Okay. And I can say, I don't know, uh, whatever it is. So let's say T. Uh, or, I can't remember which names I used. Thankfully for myself, when I'm in edit mode, which I'm in right now, if I'm in the middle of a formula, correct? If you go up to define names, you notice the only thing that's available is this one here. So if you forget the name of a range, like I just did, select this, and I can say the average of I don't know, expenses. Because next week, we will start doing things like the VLOOKUP, the HLOOKUP, and then, then we're going to get really deep into working with functions and formulas where you have to be, it, it's not as easy and basic as the average, the max, the, sum, the, the, the min and that. So when we get to that part in the book, that's when we're going to need to uh, start applying some of these concepts here. But for now, it's good to know where it is. And then, can I press the enter key or not? Yes, I can. Sometimes it'll complete it for you, and sometimes it won't. Okay. So that gets me to give or take, and it's not exactly the way the book is done, but it gives you a, an understanding of range names. And that gets me to the end of lesson two, page 41. So let me write that down. Um.
Okay. One. All right. What are you doing? Um, what are we supposed to send you? I'm about to write that down. Oh, sorry, Mo. I just wrote that to you. I'm so sorry. Oh. Uh, Mo, Mo got the instructions, but you didn't. We. Didn't. Uh, you're the only one that got it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that's the first instruction. The next one is what we're going when we come back in next week, we will review as a group the questions at the end of lesson one. Okay, so the review questions of lesson one. And for this, I'll tell you now, I will be calling on everybody. Review, review. Okay, lesson one. Okay, so first thing when we get into class, that's exactly what we're going to do, jump into that. Then we're going to jump into something called tables. And again, it's so key, this stuff is so key. Even if you don't go into your certification, the, the, the use of tables are constant in um, Excel, especially for people who do more than your average stuff. Okay. Take a breath, Deborah. I'm gonna when I stop, I'm going to start getting this thing ready to I have to run out, so I will set it to go and do its thing to prepare it, I guess, for the video. And then I will paste both of those into the folder for you. It will not be till later on tonight or tomorrow. Is today Friday? Yes. I've completely forgotten what day it is. All right, so thank you, everybody. Uh, beautiful. Okay, so I'm just going to go back and say uh, the only problem with colored hair is you cannot wash it as often as you like because otherwise the color comes out. And my beautiful white bathroom will go to beautiful pink bathroom. And I'll spend <laughs> the next six hours doing that. So anyways, don't do what I do. Don't do bright colors with your hair. Otherwise, you end up cleaning your bathroom a lot. So thank you, everybody. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your patience. I hope you got something out of today. If there's something um, like, uh, I think, I'm still getting to know people's names here. Um, where is everybody? Uh, Deborah, I was supposed to send you some files. No, I don't. Thing. Just the this work from yesterday. I'm going to post that in there. Okay, and that was the only thing I said. I think I was going to share with you. Oh, the link I have already here for custom formatting. Okay, can we put our name in the chat or not? I couldn't quite hear you. I'm so sorry. Uh, should we put our names in the chat or not? Yes, please. Yes, that way. Okay. Um, Benar, uh, and who else? Is, is Benar, you were asking. No, it was not you. It was you who was asking about the absolute relative? Was oh, what? It? it was me, Mafisa. Oh, I'm sorry, Mafisa. I apologize. I'm still um, trying to get to know people. It's okay. Um, I will post that information from yesterday. It is in there. I'll see if I can find some more resources for you. Okay, well, Ms. Bud just sent me something. So was that what uh, Debbie sent you? Sent you guys? And um, I think Debbie, I... I I didn't get the videos that you said you sent. I mean, the rest of the class did. Um, did I? Did you make nope. a new email list? Um, the video is the the video I was talking about was in the Word document, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so it's my class in the morning. They were doing the, the words. Do I have this here? All right, but I but I got everything I need. Um, yes, if you sorry. don't, yeah, yeah, I, I'll look over it. I'll mm -hmm. do some reading and yeah learning yeah all right so thank you lovely people everybody signed in to the the chat and uh signed out and so we'll see everybody next thursday and if you can help out your neighbor whoever's not here you can help keep them in help get them up to speed that would be great thank you okay thank you all right okay, thank guys. you so much for everything okay thank you very much you guys are a pleasure to thank see you, you. Uh, thank you see you much. next week. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.